So somatic mutations are not the origin of cancer. How do we get cancer? How does it arise? Well, this goes back, as, as it was said in the intro, that Warburg, the German uh, scientist uh, from the 1920s, 30s, uh, he passed away in 1970, actually. Um, but he clearly showed that cancer arises from chronic damage to cellular respiration, the way we get energy from oxygen. Energy through fermentation gradually compensates for insufficient respiration. Fermentation is energy without oxygen. It's a very primitive, ancient form of generating energy. Cancer cells continue to ferment glucose in the presence of oxygen, which is referred to as the Warburg effect. And we call this aerobic fermentation. Cells should not ferment in the presence of oxygen. Cancer cells continue to ferment in the presence of oxygen. Very abnormal. Now, uh, there was a lot of controversy about Warburg's findings, but we filled in, we discovered that uh, uh, cancer cells also ferment an amino acid, glutamine. Glutamine is the most abundant amino acid in our bloodstream, the most abundant amino acid in our body. It's an amino acid, glutamine. And this uh, cancer cells will ferment glutamine. They can burn glutamine in the absence of oxygen for energy. And we call this the Q effect to make, make sure it's different from the Warburg effect. Q is the singular letter that identifies glutamine in the biochemistry uh, um, profile. So this is the missing link in Otto Warburg's central theory um, that we now know that cancer cells survive on fermentation, but they will fer ferment uh, lactic acid from glu glucose and they'll fer ferment succinic acid from glutamine. So the cancer cells are deriving their energy from fermentation rather than from uh, oxidative respiration. Now, the important issue here is that enhanced fermentation is the signature metabolic mal malady of all cancer cells. We've looked into this. So if you look at cancer, all these cancer cells have different mutations. There's different cell types, so all these kind of heterogeneity, but they're all fermenting. So the signature metabolic ma malady is fermentation driven by glucose and glutamine. It's, and you'll come to realize that if we target glucose and glutamine, we can manage the majority of cancers. So let's look at the evidence to support Warburg's central theory that cancer is damaged respiration. So this is an electron micrograph of a mitochondria because these are tiny, tiny organelles in the cytoplasm of the cell. And you need to use electron microscopy to really see the structure uh, of the organelle. So you can see these nice stripes you see here through the normal mitochondrion. And um, these are called cristae and they contain the lipids and proteins of the electron transport chain that allows us to generate ATP energy from the oxygen that we breathe, okay? So the cristae, you see how beautiful the structure is. Uh, these are very sophisticated organelles. Uh, they can generate tremendous amounts of energy in the presence of oxygen to keep all of our tissues alive and our cell or brain and, and our cells uh, uh, participatory in metabolic homeostasis. Now, this is a glioblastoma, a very deadly brain cancer. I'll talk more about that later. But you can see it's hollow. It's crystallysis. There's a breakdown. There's no cristae. So this organelle is not going to be able to generate energy because the structure is abnormal. And I'll show you more evidence for this, not just brain cancer. Here's a, an example of breast cancer. This is a, uh, these are breast tumor cells, and these are normal um, breast epithelial cells. And you can see the normal cell here has the nice stripes, the cristae, whereas the, the mitochondrion and the breast tumor has these big holes, these uh, crystallysis, abnormal cristae. Um, this here, CRC, is colorectal cancer. Uh, you can see the, the uh, crystal, the, these ghost mitochondria. So structure in biology, the, the, a fundamental evolutionary concept of biology that you can all, that everyone should be able to appreciate is structure determines function. Structure determines function. If the structure of the organelle is abnormal, the function of the organelle will be abnormal. Are you passionate about the groundbreaking and heroic research of Dr. Thomas Seifert on metabolic therapy and cancer? So are we. That's why we've created something special for you, in collaboration with Johnny Rockermeyer, a German book publisher and translator. Introducing our collection of meticulously crafted books that distill the essence of Dr. Seyfried's work. Dive into the science and discoveries. These summary books are your gateway to understanding the intricate world of metabolic ketogenic therapy in a clear, concise, and engaging way. Whether you're new to the subject or a seasoned enthusiast, 
our books offer insights that can change your life. Ready to explore this transformative knowledge? Visit our website at www.cancerasametabolicdisease.com to get your copy. You can buy the ebook there directly and the paper book via the provided links. Here's the best part. A portion of every purchase goes directly to support Dr. Thomas Seyfried's groundbreaking research. That's why the direct ebook purchase is the best option to donate as much as possible. You can see all of the donations Mr. Rockermeyer has already made at www.ketoforcancer.net. That's right, when you buy our books, you're not just investing in your own knowledge, you're also contributing to the future of cancer research. Help us make a difference. Together, we can drive change and save lives. So what I did, and I don't expect people to see this because it's quite dense, but these are all of the major cancers that we know of, lung cancer, neuroblast, pancreatic, ovarian, colorectal, breast, whatever. You know, I went through the literature and detailed in all of these major cancers that mitochondria were abnormal in structure and function. Structure determines function. If the structure is abnormal, the function will be abnormal. If the mitochondria structure is abnormal, the function of that organelle will be abnormal. That the role of that organelle is to generate energy through respiration. So if you can't generate energy through respiration, in order to survive, the, the cell must ferment. So let's look at energy a little bit here. This is energy metabolism in normal cells. The glycolysis pathway breaks glucose down to pyruvic acid or pyruvate, a 10 step. This is an ancient pathway that existed in all cells before oxygen came into the atmosphere 2.5 billion years ago. So this is an ancient, ancient pathway, but it presents, uh, breaks down the sugar glucose, the pyruvate enters the mitochondria and is fully oxidized in the Krebs cycle, named for Hans Krebs, also the TCA cycle, citric acid cycle, the same names for the same thing. And what it does is it collects the energy from the sun that was in, in the bonds of the glucose molecule, breaks the these bonds down, captures the energy of the sun in these uh, reducing equivalents, which then deliver their electrons to the proteins in the cristae, the electron transport chain, oxidative phosphorylation, and you see this large starburst here, ATP. So the most of the energy coming in our cells, 89 to 90% energy, is coming from the full oxidation of glucose down, and the waste products are CO2 and water, okay? So this is the way most of all healthy cells in our body get the majority of their energy. We all breathe air. Uh, we generate energy from the foods that we eat. We break it down. The foods that we eat embody the, the biology of the sun. The sun, the sun actually creates this. We break those bonds down, recapture the energy of the sun in, in respiration, and we get the majority of our energy here. Now, you don't see these small starbursts here. These, um, this is the way all cells got energy before oxygen came into the atmosphere. These little ancient pathways, you can get, they still, they're still there. They're still present in modern cells. It's just that they're very, very much less energy. Most of the energy now is coming from respiration. Now let's compare this with what we see in a cancer cell. So now immediately, the first thing you see is the starburst is somewhere else. It's here. It's here from a different source. And it's also here in the cytoplasm. So the ancient pathways are now producing the majority of the energy. The oxidative phosphorylation is not producing the energy because the organelle, the cristae are gone. So you're not gonna get the energy here. So the cell, the cancer cell falls back on these ancient pathways that existed before oxygen came into the atmosphere. The interesting thing is when they do that, they become completely growth dysregulated. And the waste products, lactic acid and succinic acid, acidify the microenvironment of the tumor cell, making the spread of the tumor cell through the tissues uh, uh, much greater because of all the waste that's now creating acidification, which doesn't occur in the normal cells. You don't get any of this. So the cancer cell is simply falling back on ancient pathways, acidifying the microenvironment. And this is driven, these fuels are driven. Here's glucose. And what's driving here is the glutamine. The glutamine, the amino acid glutamine is driving this part, part and the uh, sugar glucose is driving this part. So the abnormal energy of the cancer cell is being driven by glucose and glutamine. 
not by oxygen because they lost that ability. Now, this is more complicated, but this is the uh, uh, structural uh, example of what we're talking about. Uh, here's glycolysis, the ancient pathway of glycolysis and glutaminolysis. Um, and uh, what's happening here, uh, glucose is metabolized to lactic acid, which acidifies the microenvironment. Um, but very little ATP is coming here. I, I'll, I can explain if anybody's interested. Here's the glutamine, the amino acid. It comes through a series of pathways. Uh, and right here, boom, here's the energy coming from glutamine. So glutamine is generating the majority of the energy. The oxygen, cancer cells do take in oxygen, but they're not linked to ATP production, but rather to the production of ROS, ROS, which are reactive radicals that damage DNA and RNA and actually cause a tremendous amount of damage. So, uh, and then succinate is dumped out to acidify the microenvironment, lactic acid is dumped out. So the cancer cell is driven by, by glucose and glutamine, producing energy by an ancient pathway, also producing reactive oxygen species, uh, causing uh, a tremendous amount of damage in the microenvironment. So here's our diagram uh, to encapsulate how we link the hallmarks of cancer according to the gene theory and Hanahan and Weinberg, all of these hallmarks here on the right can all be linked back to damage to the mitochondria. So let's look carefully at the origin of cancer. So everyone, we call certain chemicals as carcinogens, like in smoke, uh, there's a lot of carcinogens in, in, in cigarette and tobacco smoke. And we know that that can damage mitochondria. Carcinogens damage the mitochondria. People fear radiation because radiation can cause cancer uh, by damaging uh, mitochondria. Intermittent hypoxia, like sleep apnea and occlusion of a blood vessel or something, can create intermittent <clears throat> hypoxia, which will damage the mitochondria, okay? Um, systemic inflammation can damage the mitochondria. Um, obesity uh, is linked to systemic inflammation. Um, obesity, <coughs> excuse me, is the second most, uh, behind smoke, cigarette smoke, is the most uh, provocative agent for damaging uh, mitochondria. Uh, rare, rare inherited mutations like the BRCA1 gene. You heard about Angelina Jolie with the BRCA1 having, you know, breasts and ovaries removed or what have you. A lot of women, a lot of people, many, not everyone, but some people do this. Um, so these mutations are risk factors. They, they are risk factors because they damage the respiration. All of these provocative agents are risk factors. Oncogenic viruses like papilloma and hepatitis they damage the respiration and also age. The older you get, the more likely you can have a, a damage to your respiration leading to um, uh, disruption of oxidative phosphorylation. And this had been known for many years. This was called the oncogenic paradox because no one could figure out how all of these disparate risk factors could cause cancer uh, through a common pathophysiological mechanism. And if those of you who read the book, Emperor of All Maladies, by Sid Mukherjee, which was on the New York Times bestseller list for many years, and was the uh, received the Pulitzer Prize uh, for the for the book. Um, he struggles with this. He had no idea, as Mukherjee in the book, how all these different provocative agents could can could cause cancer through a common pathophysiological mechanism. And we we define we we solved the par the paradox. Uh, we know that all of these provocative agents will cause reactive oxygen species, ROS. And this, uh, these ROS are carcinogenic and mutagenic. So the ROS cause the mutations in the nucleus, all right? So the mutations are an effect. They're not the cause. They're a downstream effect of mitochondrial damage. But when the mitochondria can't produce energy through oxidative phosphorylation, they upregulate fermentation through substrate level phosphorylation. And what happens is what is upregulating SLP uh, fermentation? And it is the oncogenes. So the oncogenes are facilitators of the fermentation process. They allow the cell to take in more glucose and glutamine. So um, when you can't breathe, the the, if, this, if a cell doesn't die right away, but it's chronic, it's a chronic progression over time, the cell gradually upregulates fermentation. You get the Warburg effect and mitochondrial fermentation. 
okay? And now you can link all of the hallmarks of cancer that people think are, are really important are all downstream effects of damage to the mitochondria. So we're spending millions of dollars and spending massive amounts of scientific research on, on these hallmarks that all can be linked back to damage to the respiration. And now that we know this, we, there are very clear ways that by which we can solve this cancer problem quite effectively. Mm -hmm.